Welcome to OpenSCAD. What you have against freedom. So this is the OpenSCAD talk. Um, OpenSCAD is a uh, CAD program. Uh, so the point of this talk is to both tell you about uh, how to code in OpenSCAD and show you a little bit of some of its uh, examples, uh, also some of its children. <clears throat> so this is uh, how you how you would install OpenSCAD. I'm going to be giving this to the uh, the uh, guys. Russians. <laughs> yeah, well, too eventually. But some of the so so the guys who do this um, basically OpenSCAD is amazing, and I'm going way too fast apparently. Six slides. The computer is going fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> that too. So we have a joke here. We pop into the mic. <clears throat> the, uh, the cheat sheet is pretty good. Um, the user manual is, <laughs> is pretty good. Uh, these are excellent links that you should go to. So, how do you code an OpenSCAD? Uh, it's similar to C in that the uh, you you declare variables the same way, you uh, you you comments the same way. They used to have a limitation where you you could only declare variables at at uh, the top of the uh, of the Source. file, yeah, where you you can actually change the files now, but uh, they've they've changed it somewhat where you can declare variables at the at, at the top of the uh, the module declaration. Um, basically, it's it's very similar to C. Where, where you have the, uh, it, it's, it's similar to, uh, uh, what do you call it? See? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> don't, well, I mean, be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's similar to, to type definitions, where, or, or, uh, <laughs> say again? Nothing. Yes. <laughs> I can't. Nobody. Nope. I can hear you. No one else can hear you. That's the point, Phil. <laughs> that is the point. So basically, in OpenSCAD, the point is declaring primitives and and uh, translating on the on the primitives in order to, uh, to to build shapes and and in order to uh, to create. Uh, useful yes. objects. So you have cubes, you have spheres, you have cylinders. So you also have other objects. This is how you declare these things. Uh, polyhedrons are Bob. Is it 3D only or no? 2D. So you can actually you what you can do with with 2D is is you can project onto a 2D object, or onto a 2D plane. So it's it's not only 3D. Uh, what, what you do is, it, so, so OpenSCAD will, will project onto 2D, and then you can uh, export into DXF, which is a 2D format, which can then be used for uh, CAM, for, uh, for layering. Layer, yeah. So, so no. Uh, the, the the primary use of, of OpenSCAD is 3D. So you so it, it its primary use is, is STLs. But no, it, it, it can be used for TV. Uh, and actually, uh, I, I have an example later on that, that does to me. Uh, so here we have 2D. 
So later on, we do. Uh, so one of the examples, or one of one of the uh, the really uh, powerful uses of, of uh, OpenSCAD is its ability to take inputs for use in, uh, in programs or, or uh, modules. So you can set it up so that it takes inputs. Uh, this is a really relatively simple uh, example where basically it's setting up so you're setting up cylinders to, to move it around. So the point that very, very, I, I can't stre or, uh, stress this enough, the, uh, the, the, the strength of, of OpenSCAD is in the, the difference and the intersection operators and in the translation operators. Uh, basically, its, it's strength is in, uh, in, in building these, these structures. You can, you can basically, uh, what, what you see here is a, uh, is a sim very simple uh, a couple of, of uh, translated uh, cylinders that are that are uh, intersected or or differenced, but you don't necessarily have to uh, do just cylinders. Uh, it's you can do cubes which basically allows you to do any kind of uh, three-dimensional rectangular shape or, or you know, on, on top of cylinders, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, basically, uh, I, I've, I've got examples later, but uh, it's, it's very, I mean, this, this, is, this is the strength of, of OpenSCAD right here. Is, is the oh, yeah. is differences and in intersections uh, right here? I mean, right now. Uh, translate obviously. So so OpenSCAD is very similar to uh, to VRML uh, in in that you allow, it allows you to uh, translate, move around, uh, scale, resize, do all those. Uh, uh, translations. Uh, it 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 allows you to uh, operate on uh, matrices uh, similar to to you know uh, if you if, if you're familiar with, with matrix uh, arithmetic, uh, do that that sort of thing. Uh, Some of the more entertaining uh, transformations are some of the offsets. Uh, colors allow you to do RGB. They actually have a, uh, uh, a dictionary of, of some presets colors. So you can, rather than uh, Rather than doing the uh, RGBA, you can do a. Uh, uh, you can do a in, instead of a open bracket close bracket, you can do a, a a quote and name the color, and some of those colors uh, do work. They they actually have a large range of colors that work, so you can do uh, color. Uh, 
some of the uh, chamfers are pretty important. <coughs> So specifically, the uh, hull and projection are uh, very useful. So later on, I'll have examples for the hull and the projection. But uh, hull basically allows you to merge the, the outlines. It's, it's not a union, but basically it, it connects all the way around a, uh, a, a so here we have two here and here's one. this is basically the uh, a lazy man's 3d uh, uh, way of describing a shape so what you can do is you can just describe three or nine points and, and describe a shape without having to worry about whether or not the shape is, is uh, closed or open. Whereas if you actually do the, uh, the, the, the polyhedron, you have to worry about whether or not it's open or closed. So one of the other options is doing uh, hey, Does that projection take a vector? So projection is a way of taking a three-dimensional object that you just created and then pushing it to a, into a two-dimensional object. Yes, that, but the, I'm asking does it take a like as an argument or some parameter uh, or, or low valuable, yeah, which direction is being projected on the uh, plane? That would, that would depend on how you were importing it into the object. So you could, you could import an object, uh, ex basically uh, extend it into three dimensions, and then export it out to two dimensions again. So all the transform has to take place on the yeah. 3D plane. Yes. Uh, also, one of one of the uh, strengths of OpenSCAD is is uh, loops, conditions, stuff like that. So one of the things that, that I've I've done recently was uh, if statements uh, and and for statements or for loops. So basically, uh, you you declare an object and then you extend it later on, like it 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 builds. On out of that. You can use that for, uh, for translations, you can use that for uh, yeah. I don't know what you would use that for other than translations, but so you can also import Previously defined SDLs. Uh, these are these are three-dimensional objects that have been defined. Uh, OpenSCAD or not OpenSCAD. Uh, Thingiverse is a is is one of uh, is a website for uh, for pulling uh, three-dimensional objects from. Uh, Basically, that other people have uh, put out. Model. Uh, yes. Uh, and and you can you can take those three dimensional objects and uh, import them into your model, and then translate them and uh, do things to them. So you can import them. You can. Uh, Translate them. You can you can scale them. You can do all the interesting things to them um, in order to use them for your use. Does the STL support color that you had earlier? You can you can apply color to things. Yeah. 
But it doesn't have it in there. Say again? STL doesn't have color in it. No. Okay. Yeah. STL is basically a point cloud. So some of the de derivatives that uh, OpenSCAD has, um, these are these are things that uh, people have, have taken OpenSCAD and then built either or um, um, extensions to or, or code generators for uh, OpenSCAD. So one of the uh, interesting things, uh, it's very scratch-like uh, in that it shows you explicitly the, uh, the, the scope of, of what's going on. Uh, block scad. Um, oh gosh. This is... <laughs> crystal crystal scad is used uh, in a couple of, of uh, open source projects, specifically the uh, C. <laughs> no. <laughs> so a, a couple of the. Uh, the uh, open bio projects. Uh, so there's there's a a group out there that's that's building um, uh, tools that are that are useful for uh, developing countries for uh, building um, like tools for. So one one of the so some of the tools are uh, like an, I don't know what do you call the the uh, ear hearing aids. No, uh, it's See. it's it's a it's a tool for looking into an ear to see whether or not it's infected. Uh, another one's a, uh, a a gauze loom. Uh, there there are a couple of or. Uh, biological, like biologically useful tools for uh, developing countries uh, that that are using uh, crystal scad. Uh, they they basically have their uh, objects that are defined in in Ruby, and they they compile it to OpenSCAD, which then they compile to. Uh, uh, SEO. Uh, Solid Python is another one uh, that basically is, is similar where they're defining objects in Python that, that then they compile to OpenSCAD, which compiles to uh, SDL. Uh, JSCAD is, a, is another one that they uh, compile to, or that, that it, it's more of a visualization tool. So here we have more examples. Uh, this was a, a part that I designed for a uh, log that used an STL and some OpenSCAD and uh, combined them together in order to 3D print a part for a 3D printer. So that's that's actually more the power of OpenSCAD is is the ability to take a, an STL and and combine it with another STL or describe an STL. So here's an example of BlockSCAD. BlockSCAD is really an interesting uh, a tool where basically it. It allows you to visualize the the scope of of various or of variables and allows you to describe what 
a, an, an object is. So here's an object that, that was describing a pump. And then here was the pump being used in another object. object. Uh, basically, we, I, I, I got this far and then decided that it was, uh, I, I, had, I had designed too far with too, far too many uh, uh, magic numbers. So magic numbers are, as, as we all know, a, 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 a bad thing. Uh, so basically this, this was the object in, in OpenSCAD. Uh, and this was the object after it had been cut out, uh, projected in, in 3D and, and implemented. So, basically, uh, So, I guess at this point in the, uh, in the discussion, uh, do we have, I'd like to uh, open it up to uh, audience participation. Do we have any questions? Yes. Do you remember uh, Pavre POV? I remember Puffery, but I did not ever use Puffery. It kind of reminds me a little bit of a kind of algorithmic uh, 3D scene generation. Yes. Um, but that was meant for ray tracing and camera purposes. Right. Not, not solid at that level. Still, it kind of reminds me. Yeah. So, for me, this this is reminiscent of, uh, the, of, of VR now. I... I I, I came up more in, in the uh, virtual reality model language, and so it's it's more uh, reminiscent of that to me. Yes. How did you do placement? Uh, might have not been in here for that portion. Say again? Like uh, placement within the uh, 3D environment? Yeah. So, uh, Can you give, like, going, going back over here, uh, that goes back into the, the transformations, the translate uh, function is, is basically what you use for that. So it's, it's a, a X, Y, Z. Oh, but the, the neat thing about uh, translate is that you can operate over whatever is inside the scope. So there, you, you can either describe a, a specific primitive or you can open a bracket and then describe everything that's inside the bracket. Okay. Or everything that's inside the bracket. So now is it like uh, translated at the center of the module, or is it like at one specific? Well, that's point? that's dependent on how you describe the primitive okay. or the, the the contents. So. Does anything recognize its syntax? Say again? Do you have anything that recognizes <clears throat> OpenSCAD syntax? Like no pet plus plus syntax coloring? I don't. Just to hate you. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. Emacs does. Oh, this shit is a dozen. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it hey, got him the front, front okay? Or is it something? Yeah. Oh, it'll be a little bit. 
So, for example, you see this this translator here. This is describing a. Uh, this, this is translating against the wall thickness plus a magic number five against the uh, the, the tube condenser, which is this uh, this this. flat part here. So it's it's basically calling a function that's described. Okay. What is the purpose of the object described by the code on the screen? What did it do? Oh this <laughs> was a drink bot that I didn't quite yeah, bring to like a drink bot. Yeah. 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 Watch Mark's talk. Mark hadn't given his talk yet on how to fix yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I almost burned it. It was it was it was finished enough for you to make a slide with a photo of it. So I think that's I, I, I almost shame. Burned. Yeah, there is there is a little bit of shame. <laughs> a tiny bit of shame. Not enough. <laughs> I am I am yes. not waves, unshameless. Waves of shame. He's working on how to surplus right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this this was where it was last night, <laughs> or the night before the last. You should go get it. We can work on this. <laughs> yeah, we need to do uh, some data sets. Say again. We need to do some data sets. <laughs> Unit testing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We'll be waiting. But can it be recreated? <laughs> well, I mean, it already <laughs> exists. <laughs> The, uh, yeah, this, space, right? this, this is in fact meat space. I'm pretty sure this is CGI. Yes. Yeah, this, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> this is just a render. It looks like so, yeah. so yes. that's that's somebody the, exported this that's to an POV. Right there. I have a follow-up question. Yes. Drink pot? Yes. That's the question. What did you ah, what is it? <laughs> so I do. Each of the pumps are up to an alcohol yes. mm -hmm. dispenses remix drinks. Correct. So, so the uh, the original plan was that it was going to have a, uh, a menu that you could select a, a variety of drinks, and then I began playing with the Omega and playing with PWM and discovered that. My original plan was was incompatible, and so then I started doing Mog's thing, where I expanded my uh, scope. <laughs> so <pretty. laughs> Basically, uh, going back to my talk. <laughs> so, basically, some of part of the point of this talk was to describe uh, what block scan was, which block scan is a really interesting. Uh, it's it's basically uh, a, a visual representation of what's going on with OpenSCAD. Yes. Is it kind of like Simulink? I've never used Sim Simulink. Oh. Uh, it it looks a lot like Simulink. <coughs> Does OpenSCAD not give us a visual at all? OpenSCAD gives you basically the uh, the 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 compile or well. I mean, what you're looking at here is OpenSCAD. This is OpenSCAD. I mean, so where where I'm zooming around here? Are we looking at this is OpenSCAD now? This yes. Okay. This is OpenSCAD. I'm badly zooming and OpenSCAD. 
So, yes, OpenSCED does visualization. Uh, what BlockSCED does is it allows you to visualize what's what's going on in the scope. So, it, it gives you more information about what's uh, what. Not necessarily vari variables, but yes, it also gives you variables, uh, as you can see here. Uh, basically, what it does is it allows you to describe variables uh, here. These are all variables. The problem that I've found with OpenSCAD is, or with BlockSCAD is that it tends to allow you to, uh, to describe um, objects like basically what's happening here is your is is there's a uh, a, a loop that's describing this five uh, objects here and then you're you're and then I'm translating that loop and describing that uh, behind that um, that's that's actually on a, uh, a, a, a GitHub that, that is is published. Um, if you look for an Abertain slash Dracod on uh, GitHub, you'll, you'll find the stuff. But uh, <coughs> the uh, basically what what's what's happening in whoa, what's happening here is is. There's there's a whole lot of, of definition here. It, it it's not as fast to define these uh, these these blocks and these primitives as it is to do that in code. Uh, it's it's much faster in code to describe a variable and then use the variable. Uh, so. Block sketch is is useful, but it's useful from a uh, from from a visual visualization perspective. Also, uh, block sketch is is so. Would you recommend if someone doesn't code a lot, would they start with block sketch? Then is that I I would actually I, I would. Completely recommend BlockSCAD as, as an introduction to OpenSCAD. Uh, BlockSCAD uh, starts here. Uh, it's not true. Hi, I'm Dagmar. So if you, uh, and this link is in the presentation, which will be published uh, to the uh, But basically, uh, blockscad.einsteinsworkshop.com. Uh, and then, if you go over to the code section, it will show you what you've done <coughs> in OpenSCAD, which you can then copy and then paste directly into OpenSCAD, and it just works. You can also set it to, uh, to save, and it will save it in XML which is useful. Will it generate the block scan from OpenSCAD? Yeah. Okay. Well, from OpenSCAD, no, it, it, it won't go the other way. You you basically have to build it in block scan. It won't generate this from No. Uh, OpenJSCAD will. You can, you can basically paste stuff into OpenJSCAD. And, and JSCAD uh, is is using. Let me see if I have that. Yeah. Open JSCAD uh, is is basically a, a, a visual terminal. It's it's very similar to uh, uh, OpenSCAD, but. It allows you to, uh, to visualize stuff in the same way.
But this is basically a JavaScript uh, version of Runscape that also allows you to export to a CRM. So basically, uh, well, not basically. Uh, Some of the other say uh, <laughs> <laughs> that Ian needs to shut up. Apparently, <laughs> who Ian? <laughs> Someone yelled that from the other room. <laughs> So going back to uh, the various transformations, uh, hold is a really useful command. Basically, you can you can describe uh, uh, three-dimensional shapes, and it will it will extract and, and pull those into a uh, another shape. So this is how I uh, defined the. Uh, So when when uh, Mog first asked for this particular piece, uh, So basically, uh, this this was a uh, a part that was used for a three D printer uh, that that Mog had asked for. Uh, what you don't see here is the uh, the uh, sensor that, that fits down in the cylinder uh, hole there. Basically, uh, the So basically, this is uh, describing the the shape or a shape that is a, a cylinder here or a, a cube that's flat here and then flat here, and it's describing the uh, the pyramid against this shape. So that's. It allows you to to be slightly lazier, where you're basically just pulling. You're you're describing a a, a simpler shape, moving it against what you want, and then it you you don't have to uh, 
Say so again? I'm oh, sorry, this guy's singing behind you. It's just oh. <laughs> getting ready for karaoke. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, do I have any questions? So, so how does that actually make it into a triangle? So what I'm what I'm doing here is I'm describing uh, a a a flat plane here and a flat plane here, and it's it's pulling it's 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 pulling the uh, it, it's creating the union of those two objects. But so, you're not describing that union. You're just no. describing the two objects it's, and putting them in yep. and it's building it for you. It's like it's wrapping it into plain saran wrap. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's another way to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so hull is very useful. Also, uh, projection. Um, so, at, at the make shop, we have a 3D printer. Uh, projection is used for creating um, DXFs. So, basically, what you do is you take a, a three-dimensional object and you, uh, you know, it, imagine, if you will, a, a a light that is that is passing through the object uh, against a, a flat plane, and that's that's basically it. It then takes the uh, what's what's passed through and uh, so if you have like projectile shining onto an object, but it's yes. still behind on a flat screen. Yes, directly against the object. So there's there's no uh, um, spread. Okay. And what is that useful for? So DXFs, uh, a lot of of uh, CAD, like CAM uh, programs are use DXFs. So basically, what you can do is is uh, I'm using the word basically a lot. Basically. I'm <laughs> sorry. Basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what you do is, is it, uh, a DXF is a, a two-dimensional projection uh, that a CAM program can then load in and then use for creating uh, uh, cuts. In, in two dimensions. So a laser cutter can go in and, and cut uh, two dimensionally. Uh, a CNC machine can then go in and, and you can tell it for this particular part of the object, cut so this So no one thinks about it like a 3D. It right. Just thinks about like, okay, so yeah, the laser cutter example just filled everything up for that question. I'll yes. So that that was actually how I uh, actually is another one of my pet peeves. I don't think the word actual. <laughs> so this was cut out of quarter inch MDF. Uh, I threw a, a big chunk of MDF on a laser cutter and blasted out of these pieces. So that was how this was uh, done. Any other questions? Yeah. 